In this movie, we're going to take a look at how you actually save tool presets. And one of the things that I do is I really try to adopt a set of standard descriptive terms for naming my brushes. By being consistent, you will easily be able to select various brushes knowing how they will behave. Let's take a look into saving and naming your bouncing bundle of brushes. Okay, so we're going to start off and I'm going to just create a sample brush here that would be useful and it will be included in your exercise file as well. So I'm going to go to my brush menu and the first thing I'm going to do here is I want to change the brush shape and I'm going to change it to a round blunt point. These settings I'm happy with, so I'm not going to change them, but let's look at the transfer panel. One of the things that I do, not with all of my brushes, but it doesn't hurt to have all of these turned on. You'll get the most out of these brushes, particularly with a pressure sensitive pen when you use this. And I also want to include texture in this. And this is a texture that I have come to like in the basic set of artist textures that Adobe provides. Scale, I'm going to keep it 100. I like the height mode, depth, all of this, I'm going to keep the same. Now let's go up here and I am going to keep both auto cleaning and auto loading my brushes turned on. I want wet to be zero because what we want to get here is a brush that is opaque and I like what's happening here. I can see my texture in this brush. We're going to keep a short load on this so that this brush runs out of paint. So it's going to be a short brush. So with all of these various things that we're doing to the brush, this is where I start to try to figure out how to name my brushes. Now, the one way I like to do it is I organize my descriptions so that they go from the very specific to more general. And the most specific thing about this brush is the type of brush that it is. And as we remember from looking at this before, really you've got five basic types here in two categories, round and flat. So pointed, blunt, curved, angle, and fan are really kind of the most specific descriptors of brushes. So I'm going to start by using blunt in my terminology here. And to save this, I'm going to go up and I want to save not a brush preset. And this is where you can get confused. You're in brushes, you'd think go to the brush presets to save it. We don't want to do that. We want to save this as a tool preset. So I'm going to go to the tool preset menu and say new tool preset. And Adobe kind of puts a basic set of names in here, but they're rather mixed up and jumbled. So I'm going to start with my specific brush name, a blunt brush. So we know blunt is the basic category of it. The second name I want to give this in terms of the category, it is a round tip. So we're going to say round. Secondly, the way I've described and organized this brush is it has a very short stroke life. So I'm going to call it short. And finally, it's an opaque brush. So this brush becomes the blunt, round, short, opaque. And for each of these types I've select here, we'll see this in a couple other examples, I will use a consistent naming convention for the brushes. And you'll see here in a moment how this starts to come together. So we've saved it. We now have blunt, round, short, opaque. Now all it's going to take is a couple change-ups here to alter the behavior of these brushes. So for example, just turning off auto load and increasing wetness a bit, I've now got a blender brush. So just that little change by itself. All the other characteristics, you can see there's still texture being part of this brush, but it is now a blender variation on this. So let's save this tool preset. And we can use the same naming convention. So this is going to be a blunt, round, short. And in this case, it's a blender because it's not applying color. It's only moving color around. Now we've got two variations here. So if I go to this brush, I'm now painting with my opaque brush. When I switch to this one, I'm now blending. And the other little difference we can do in here is we can make this a smeary brush. And to do that, I'm just going to turn color back on. Let's get a third color here to test this out. So now this applies some color, but it also, because it's wet, it tends to smear into the underlying color it finds. 
So this brush, once again, using this consistent naming convention, I'll create a new tool preset. This one will be blunt. Again, it's round, it's short. And in this case, it's smeary. So now I've saved a triplet of three brushes with three different behaviors. And yet I can tell right at the beginning what type of tip and what type of behavior I'm going to get when I get to what these brushes ultimately do. So once again, we have our opaque brush. We've got a smeary brush and we've got a blender brush. So basically we started here with a set of brushes that exhibit a similar tip shapes and similar stroke life, but the ultimate characteristic, whether they're opaque or blenders or smeary are different. These now can become the seeds for mastering and creating further brushes. For example, you could change the tip shape or you could change it from a short brush to a long stroke brush based on the load characteristic. But starting with these three brushes, you now could create a whole library of brushes. And by naming them in a consistent manner, you'll be able to look at these and get an instant feedback as to which brush you're going to get based on its characteristics. And that for me is a very important aspect of naming brushes, particularly as you get into larger collections by thinking about this up front and having consistent terminology for the various aspects of the brushes as that collection builds it's not going to get confusing as to what you have in your collection. So be very careful about how you name these brushes and be sure you come up with consistent terminology. Just don't name your brushes names like Chad or Crystal or Mariah.